Hello and welcome to Boston University's Genealogy Program webinar. Thank you all for tuning in this afternoon to learn more about BU's two distinguished online courses and what you can expect from your studies with us. My name is Sarah and I'll be moderating today's session alongside our host and program director, Melissa Johnson, and later introduce BU's enrollment advisor, Amber Nolan. We'll also be conducting a live Q&A session at the end of our presentation, so please be sure to use the question box in your attendee control panel to submit questions throughout the duration of the webinar or during the Q&A session. And this webinar is being recorded and a link will be sent to your email tomorrow afternoon for your reference and to share with your networks. All right, our fully online program is designed to help amateurs and experts alike conduct more accurate professional research and break through difficult research problems. So during today's presentation, we'll discuss two courses offered at BU, the Genealogical Principles course and the Certificate in Genealogical Research. We'll cover the curriculum in each course, some course logistics, and the registration process. I would now like to introduce the Genealogy Program Director and Certified Genealogist, Melissa Johnson. Melissa joins us today with five years of teaching experience at BU and 15 years of experience as a Certified Genealogist, as well as a national lecturer, author, and serves on the board of various genealogy associations. And with that, thank you, Melissa. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I'm happy to be here today, and I'm glad to see so many attendees here as well sharing our uh, interest in and love for genealogy. I wanted to share a little bit first about my genealogy story and how that began. Uh, when I was in grade school, <clears throat> my paternal grandfather, who you can see here in the bottom right photo, uh, he became interested in genealogy when he was trying to learn a little bit more about his mother's family. Uh, he didn't know much because she died when he was fairly young, uh, but he used to babysit me every day and I would watch him going through old family papers and I became really interested in understanding a little more about what he was doing and who these people were on these documents that he was showing me. Uh, he died when I was 11 and my dad gave those papers to me and that sort of started this lifelong journey into genealogy first as a hobbyist and then later as a professional and now working still as a professional and also as an educator. Uh, one of my most interesting discoveries after many years of documenting my family history actually came after DNA testing <clears throat> became available to researchers. Uh, it was through DNA that I found out that my maternal grandfather, who you can see in the top right picture uh, with me, that he had a different father than the man he thought was his father. So diving into those DNA test results and learning about the methodology for identifying unknown parentage and really trying to discover who his father was. And once I did, uh, learning a little more about this new family that he and I were both related to um, was something really interesting and something that I hadn't expected to find. Uh, another big part of my genealogy journey has been Boston University's genealogy programs. Um, I finished the certificate program in 2011 and began teaching with BU in 2017. So a little bit about the Boston University programs that are offered. Uh, the Genealogy Principles Program is a seven week uh, online program for those who are just starting out in their genealogy journey and also for enthusiasts who are diving into their first educational programs. Uh, in Genealogy Principles, we focus on increasing knowledge on sources and methods and learning really the basics of <clears throat> the genealogy field. Uh, our other program, the Certificate Program, is a more intensive 15-week program that covers a wide array of topics and is geared more towards intermediate or experienced genealogists or people who have already taken the principles course and have also taken some time after completing principles to apply what they've learned. Uh, genealogical principles focuses on the hands-on practice, uh, working on assignments, diving into uh, research to really gain a good understanding of the basics and to improve existing research skills. Uh, next slide. 
Uh, when we are in genealogy principles, the course will teach students about sources, best practices, methodology, and also will cover the basics of the genealogical proof standard. Uh, in this course, we also provide an introduction to DNA and ethnicity, which can then be expanded on by taking the certificate program, which has an entire module dedicated to that topic. Uh, in genealogical principles, a couple of other uh, foundational materials that are covered are making sure that students really know how to mine through records. So being able to find the records is one piece, but understanding the information that they contain is another piece of that. So looking at the genealogical proof standard and also understanding how to search for a, a wide array of sources and use the information within those sources well to the genealogical proof standard. Um, we do focus on a lot of different types of records. Uh, immigration records, probate records are some of them. <clears throat> uh, in genealogical principles, we also uh, focus on teaching key skills that are necessary for genealogists to have, like transcribing and abstract uh, using timelines to organize your research and creating work products like research plans, research logs, and research reports. Um, our genetic genealogy module that covers the very basics of genetic genealogy focuses on the types of tests. Uh, ethics, a very important topic with regard to genetic genealogy and how to interpret the results. Uh, in terms of real world practice, the principles course sets you up for being able to go out and work to a higher standard once you've completed the course. So the online databases, the work products, the research logs, research reports, timelines, being able to transcribe, being able to understand what's in those records is what's needed to really go out there and visit repositories and work with records and use DNA test results um, to actually apply that to your own or another individual's genealogy work. So the principles course um, in those seven weeks, uh, we do cover a lot of different topics. The DNA aspect, again, is a very basic introduction, um, but we do cover the basics of what's needed to understand DNA and to work with it. And again, you can expand on that by taking additional courses like the certificate program. The books that are needed for the principles course are some key books that are in the genealogy field. Uh, you may have some of these already. Uh, the Everything Guide to Online Genealogy by Kimberly Powell, who is one of our instructors in the course. And then Genealogy Standards, which is uh, a book that anyone interested in genealogy should own. And then to support modules, uh, the last module, um, the DNA module, the Family Tree Guide to DNA Testing and Genetic Genealogy. Our certificate program, again, is a 15-week course. It is more advanced than the principal's course, um, and we do teach two current genealogy standards with a large focus on meeting the genealogical proof standard. Uh, the course is presented in four modules uh, over 15 weeks. What we recommend as far as experience for the certificate program is that attendees have some experience in the genealogy field attending other educational events like conferences or local society meetings or lectures. Uh, completing genealogical principles is a great start, although we do recommend that uh, you don't go right from principles into the certificate program, that you have some practical experience first uh, in between taking principles and the certificate program. Uh, we do work fairly intensively using uh, Microsoft Word, so having some basic uh, computer skills is helpful. Understanding how to use your web browser and conduct research is also essential. Uh, we do recommend that individuals have experience researching on site, either at libraries or archives, not just online, uh, through various databases and websites. Um, we also would love to have students um, have some kind of experience reading publications like genealogy journals or historical journals. Um, and then, of course, uh, 
good written English skills, we will be working on papers and submittals uh, similar to what you'd be submitting to a client if you were working as a professional. So a little bit more about the certificate program. Uh, the first module, Genealogical Methods, really focuses on setting good foundations. So developing good research habits, making sure that your thinking is in the right direction, critical thinking when you're looking at records, when you're trying to solve something uh, about a family. And then also uh, there is some information about how DNA can be used in the genealogical methods um, module, and then learning to really understand what methodology is used to solve more complex problems where the answer might not be available at your fingertips via looking at one or two simple records. Uh, our next module focuses on evidence, evaluation, and documentation, uh, and it's here where you learn some of the key skills in terms of evidence analysis and correlation. Uh, we also teach uh, how to properly and completely create source citations uh, and then focus on really diving into the content <clears throat> of the records and understanding the sources, why they were created and whether they are reliable or credible. Um, so understanding here the difference between key methodology in the genealogy field, uh, information is what you find on a record. Evidence is how you apply that information to a research question, and proof is when a body of evidence can resolve a conclusion or answer a research question. So understanding that process. The third module focuses on forensic genealogy. So it's here that we take that deeper dive into DNA testing, both autosomal DNA, um, using DNA to identify um, unknown parentage, and then also focusing on some of the ethical considerations. So privacy considerations about the living, uh, ethical considerations regarding DNA testing. And then we also focus on other aspects of forensic genealogy, like uh, finding missing heirs and using public records to find information about living individuals. Uh, the last module in the certificate program is genealogy as a profession, and it's here where you focus on uh, being able to assemble key work products like research reports for a client. Uh, we also cover in this session um, how to work with clients, so different items related to client relations like contracts, how to manage your business. Uh, we cover BCG certification requirements. Um, and then also we focus here on uh, opportunities out in the field for professional genealogists. Uh, one of the key uh, pieces of this module that students love is one of our live classroom sessions where all of the instructors in module four participate and students can come in and ask them questions about being a professional. And that's one of the key values of the module and of the program. Uh, the books for the uh, certificate program are a little bit different. So we do have two of the same books that are used in principles, genealogy standards, and the guide to DNA testing and genetic genealogy. Uh, in addition, we also use mastering genealogical documentation and professional genealogy. And again, these books are all books that I still have on my shelf and still refer to um, every day. Uh, we have several uh, individuals who have gone through the program and who have uh, made very interesting and unique genealogy careers um, from what they've learned and from their experiences. Um, Mary Tedesco, who some of you may recognize from Genealogy Roadshow, uh, she's a graduate of the program. Uh, she's an active professional genealogist and speaker and author. Another professional genealogist, Michael McClellan, uh, he's very involved in uh, local organizations and societies where he lives. Uh, he completed the program in 2016 and is actively working as a successful professional genealogist. Uh, some of your instructional team, uh, these are the instructors for 
the certificate program and the principals program. Uh, there also are, uh, in addition to the instructors here, there are many facilitators who will also be participating, uh, supporting the instructional team in the program. Uh, so these are probably many names that you know, uh, myself, Allison Rael, Michelle Goodrum, Corey Oyson, um, Jen Zink, Emily Hackett Fisk, and Kimberly Powell. Um, so in the uh, principals program, the principals is uh, taught first modules one through four by Kimberly Powell. Uh, then Corey Oyson takes over modules five and six, and Allison Rael teaches about DNA in module seven. Uh, module one in the certificate program is also taught by Allison Rael. And then module two is Michelle Goodrum and Corey Oyson. Uh, module three is Jen Zink and Emily Hackett Fisk. And module four is myself and Kimberly Powell. Great, thank you so much, Melissa. Um, before we turn it over to Amber to go through course logistics, we'd like to launch a poll and kind of get to know everyone better and see what stage you're at in your genealogy journey. So um, we'll have Melissa kind of comment on the results afterwards, but please uh, feel free to partake. Let me just launch the poll. All right, so if everyone could please select the title that best describes you. Are you beginning your genealogy journey now? Are you an avid genealogist? perhaps a librarian or historian, a working professional genealogist, or a law enforcement professional? And we'll give everyone just a moment to uh, submit their answers and then comment on the results. All right, we'll close the poll and share results. Great to see everyone here. It uh, looks like most people are avid genealogists, so um, that's really great to see that so many people are already actively involved in their journey here, um, and some just beginning their journey. I don't know, if Melissa, if you have anything else to add. Sure. Uh, we're going to talk about this in, in just a moment, but um, there is a quiz on our BU website uh, for those who are avid genealogists. So I know that can take uh, a lot of different forms. So, you know, you, you may have been dabbling in genealogy on and off for 30 years, or you may have been very, very involved in it for five years. Um, and both of those describe an avid genealogist. Um, so I would definitely take a look at the quiz um, on the website. That that will help you to determine whether you should place into the principals program or the certificate program uh, based on some of your past experiences and your knowledge. Um, I also see that you know we have a lot of people beginning their genealogy journey um, as well and the principals program would be excellent to make sure that you're on the right track that you are working to the best of your abilities and uh, to standards, even if you're only working on your own family. Um, that's still important to make sure your work is accurate and that that work that you're preserving for future generations is correct. Um, so I would definitely encourage everyone to um, take that quiz. A uh, quick note about the quiz is that its intention is for you to take it once um, and you know not kind of go back and take it again to see if you can score higher. It's sort of supposed to be an honest uh, assessment of where you're at so that we can properly place you into the right course, a course that you will do well with and um, succeed with. So um, please keep that in mind as you're taking the quiz. Um, and I'll pass it back over. All right, thank you. So now we'll turn it over to Amber and she'll review uh, the course registration information and course logistics. So thank you, Amber. Okay, thank you, Sarah. So um, as Sarah just mentioned, the course logistics are, are um, on this slide here. So for the approximate time commitment for both of the courses, the principles is approximately 10 to 16 hours per week, and the certificate program is 15 to 30 hours per week. Um, and that is um, because the course is asynchronous, you will, um, you know, carve out that time in your schedule when you can. There's no set time to log in. So if you'd like to do your work at late at night or early in the morning, you can do those 10 to 16 hours or 15 to 30 anytime during your week. However, the course does 
go on a weekly schedule so you can't fall behind or move ahead and you're going to stay long <coughs> excuse me with your group as you do your assignments um, you're going to communicate with the faculty via discussion boards and an internal message system as i said the course is asynchronous um, firefox and google chrome are the recommended um, browsers for the course Laptops and PCs are required. You can't do the, any work on your phone. Um, and as as um, Melissa just described to you, and you saw the the pictures of the instructors, it is instructor led by those instructors. So you do get an interact um, a chance to interact with all of those instructors. Um, the class platform is Blackboard. So that is the platform you're going to log into. You don't have to download anything. Or or anything like that. So you're just going to log into our course that's hosted on Blackboard. We do offer, so we offer the certificate program three times per year in January, which is usually mid, uh, excuse me, spring or mid-January. Um, our summer session is May, usually beginning of May, and then the fall session is September, which is the usually the beginning of September. Oh, just an aside before we go back, if you could go back one more slide, Sarah. So the principles is offered six times per year. So that one is going to be offered twice in January, or it's twice twice for spring, so that's January and March, twice for summer, so May and July, and twice for fall, September and November. So three times a year for the certificate, but six for the principals. Um, so the next uh, session we're enrolling in is our fall session. Um, both of the courses will begin on September 6th, the enrollment deadline is this month by Friday the 26th. Uh, the prices, prices are there. Uh, the principles is $995 and the certificate is $2,695. Um, there are, there's a 10% discount for uh, members of certain genealogical associations that are listed on our website. And that is the website there um, for you to log into and see any any information um, that you'd like to learn more about the course. Uh, for payment options for the courses, I uh, just mentioned the 10% um, off for the associations. We do offer monthly payment plans. How those work are um, the course has to be paid for before it begins. So the payment plan would be, you know, a uh, further out from when the enrollment deadline would be. So for example, for for the fall session, there's not a monthly payment doing due, um, or excuse me, available because it's a pay in full this month because it enrolls next month. But let's say you wanted to do the spring certificate, you could start a payment plan out, possibly four months out is usually the longest one we have. So you'd pay um, a quarter, one month, than the next, next, it's an auto charge. Um, third party payments could be come through, say your employer is sponsoring you, or um, maybe you have some 529 plans, those work for these. Um, there are education loans, such as the Sally Mae Smart Option loans. Those are um, very easy to, to navigate, it's a low interest rate loan. And then we do accept some military benefits, um, the VA and the My CAA tuition funding. So these are the associations I was referring to. So um, those are on our website. To utilize the 10%, you would copy and paste the code you'd see and put it in your shopping cart. It would take the 10% off for you. Um, so any questions after this? Um, we have an, a whole enrollment team that could help you. Our email address is listed there. Our phone is 617-502-8822, and that is the link for the website. All right, great. Thank you so much, Amber, and thank oh, you, welcome. Melissa, for all the valuable information um, about our genealogy program.
So at this time, this takes us to our live Q&A session, and I know we've had some folks submitting questions throughout the webinar uh, that we've been answering on the back end. Uh, but please just remember to use your questions box on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, and we do have a very large audience joining us today, so we will certainly address as many questions as time allows us here. So, uh, Melissa, I have a feeling a lot of these questions are for you, so let's just dive right in. Um, first question for you. How large is a cohort? For example, how many participants would you expect to register for fall 2022? And that is from Mandy. Sure, so our course size really kind of varies by semester. <clears throat> we tend to get a lot more students, um, you know, certain semesters than others, but regardless of how many students there are total, there are smaller groups that the class is broken into that you will be, you know, interacting with throughout the duration of the course. Um, and those are usually about 25 to 30 students um, in the group. So that will be sort of your cohort that you are working with. Thank you very much. And Melissa, what is the salary range of a genealogist? Uh, and how do genealogists usually find clients from Annette? Sure. So that is a difficult question to answer because some genealogists work for a large company like Ancestry.com and they have, you know, sort of a set salary. Some genealogists work for themselves and they can in a way make their own salary based on how much they are charging, um, you know, coinciding of course with how many clients they get. So it really <clears throat> kind of varies. I mean, there are some genealogists just working part-time that might make, you know, 15 or $20,000 a year of retirement extra income. There are some that are making, you know, upwards of a hundred or $150,000 a year. I would say the average, is probably somewhere between about 60 to $80,000 a year would be, I think, what is considered average. Great answer, thank you. Um, next question for you, um, this one is from Mike and he's saying, I have done a fair amount of genealogical research on my own. Would you still recommend the principal's program before the certificate program? I've been researching for more than 20 years, but most is limited to ancestry and connected databases. Yeah, so if if you have mostly done your research online, um, even if you've done it over the course of 20 years and you don't have that much experience going into archives and university libraries and other repositories, I definitely would recommend starting with the principals program. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next question is from Heather. Does BU offer specialization courses? For example, I'm very interested in genetic genealogy and is there supplemental courses? Um, so right now BU just offers the two courses that we talked about today. Um, there are within the genealogy field other courses that dive into a certain topic like DNA, for example, or German research or another topic for a week, and those are called institute courses. Um, there are a couple of institutes nationwide that, that you would be able to find that have information um, about kind of a deep dive into a specific topic. Thank you very much. Next question from John. Do we use specific tools like Ancestry.com, for instance? Yes, so students um, who are enrolled in the course will receive special access to certain databases that we require them to use over the course of the uh, semester um, or the seven weeks, depending on the course you're taking. So Ancestry Library Edition is what is provided to students um, as one of those databases. Thank you, Melissa. And next question from Victoria. How much time is recommended between the principles and the certificate courses? I'm assuming if you were to sort of take them back to back. Um, I would say at least one semester in between, as long as you're utilizing that semester to gain some practical experience, actually going into archives and repositories, working on cases. Um, you know, it's more about how you maximize the time rather than how much time there is, but I would say at least one semester so that you can practice what you've learned in principles um, out in the field before diving into certificate. 
All right, thank you. Um, and Melissa, next question from Kristen. Perhaps you could offer some advice. Um, she's saying, I would like to become a professional genealogist, but what major would you recommend for an undergraduate degree? That's an interesting question. Um, and you know, you'll find that most people within the genealogy field um, are do not have a degree in a in a topic related to genealogy. Um, you know, off the top of my head, I think that the closest one would be history because you would have a a good foundation of what was going on in the world during the time period you're researching. But <clears throat> most people come to genealogy as you know, sort of a, a second career or a later in life career after another career. So, you know, there are a lot of teachers, a lot of attorneys, former, um, you know, public sector workers, former business leaders. Um, so it really kind of depends. Uh, everything is a little bit different. Um, there are a few schools that do offer, um, for example, Brigham Young University offers a undergraduate program in genealogy, but, you know, most, most people have a background in something else. Um, another topic that would be somewhat related would be business, and especially if a business school has um, a program in entrepreneurship associated with their business degree, which many schools now do, um, because you likely would be working as an entrepreneur and having those business skills would be very helpful. Great answer, thank you so much. All right, next question is for is from Jim. Uh, why is DNA so important, or is it when diving deep into the past? DNA can really only work on the living, including parents and maybe grandparents. So DNA can be used to solve problems going many, many generations back. Um, you know, the, it is certainly easier to solve problems related to the person who's taking the tests, parent or grandparent, um, but for example, you know, I, I presented a case earlier this week in a course I was teaching that, you know, solves the parentage of my fourth great grandfather um, based on largely DNA test results along with documentary sources. So, you know, DNA is important because it's a genealogical source, just like a will or a deed or a birth certificate. It's something that is available to you and that provides information that often cannot be found in any type of historical record. Um, the other thing about DNA is that it doesn't lie. So there are a lot of records out there that are inaccurate because a wrong father was named. Uh, my grandfather's example uh, that I gave you at the beginning is one of them. So, you know, DNA can be used to solve problems going very far back, um, <clears throat> you know, as long as you are using it alongside documentation. So it's, it's again, another source, just like any other, any documentary source that's available. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, next question for you, is the certificate program exclusively tailored to U.S. students or is it also aimed at international participants? For example, does it touch on how to do genealogical research using European records? Yes, yeah, so we do have a lot of students from outside of the U.S. Um, and we do talk about records from all, all around the world in the course. Um, you know, there is a little bit more of an emphasis on U.S. records because most of the students are from the U.S. But, um, you know, we do talk about, um, you know, other, other nations and all different kinds of ethnicities as well. Thank you very much. And from Scott, following up on another question, is extensive research experience at local, state, and national archival collections and libraries usually sufficient to enter the certificate program? Um, yes, depending on how much experience. So if, if you have a, a decent amount of experience in a, a, a few different repositories and you know more than one visit to each of those, then you know I would say that that likely is enough experience to enter the certificate program, but it does depend on other things, not just, you know, where you've researched. So I would definitely encourage you to take the quiz um, and, you know, see what your placement is there. Thank you. And will the principal's class focus on teaching skills on finding information, or will it focus on starting genealogy businesses? Um, so most of the, the coursework is focused on, um, you know, 
a solid understanding of concepts, um, looking at a variety of different types of information and evidence, understanding sources, understanding strategy, research strategies, methodology, but we do focus in module four um, of the certificate program on you know, business aspects of epidemiology as well. Thank you very much. And question from Lori. In the principles class, will we work on real cases? Um, so in the principles class, you work on a, um, a variety of smaller real cases. It's really in the certificate program that you dive a little deeper into them. So the principles program has you dive into you know, smaller aspects um, because it's, it's broken down into smaller kind of pieces and chunks, but there are larger assignments that will call for written papers and reports and things like that in the certificate program. All right, thank you. And question from Jill, do the approximate hours listed for the courses include the research that is not done online or would that add additional time per week to complete the course? Um, so right now, the courses don't require that any work is not done online. Um, we do have, uh, we had a uh, one assignment in module four of the certificate program that required you to visit a repository. Um, and we have sort of substituted that for the last several semesters because COVID had a lot of a lot of repositories close and because there are still a lot of staffing issues, we haven't reinstituted that yet, although we probably will within the next couple of semesters, um, at least make it an option again. Um, so that assignment is essentially uh, asking students to visit a repository, find a document, transcribe and abstract it, and create a research question from it that you will then later use to execute um, a research plan and create a report from. So that has, again, been modified because of COVID and because a lot of people still can't get into a repository. Um, but right now, so the, to answer your question initially, the um, or your initial question is that the the amount of hours that we list here um, that's total that would include even when that assignment is reinstituted the amount of time um, it would take to go into a repository great answer thank you uh, next question from chris how much focus is there on report writing and the basics like citation creation um, in the principles versus certificate course? Um, so there is not much on actually writing the reports in the principles program. So we cover the basics of what goes into reports and there are smaller assignments related to that, um, but it's really in the certificate program that we take a deep dive into report writing that you actually will go in and execute a research project and write a report and be graded on it. Um, that's in the certificate program. All right, thank you. And question from Heather, do BU instructors aid in the board certification process if needed? Um, so the BCG certification process, no one can really aid anyone in that. It's a, it's a process that you have to go through alone. You can't have anyone reviewing your work or kind of you know, answering questions for you about which path to take. It's it's intended to be something that every individual does alone without any assistance. Um, however, a lot of what you are taught in the BU programs does kind of set you up for success in terms of that. And we do point you to resources that can help you um, after you complete the program um, and are more ready for going forward towards certification. Great answer, thank you. Um, let's see here. I think this one maybe have been asked a couple of times uh, throughout, but is there ever an opportunity to present our own tree or get help with our own personal work? Um, not really in these programs. So your work is based on assignments that you are given. Um, you know, there there are um, you know 
discussion boards where you can discuss certain aspects, say, you know, if you're working on something really interesting for your own family, that you can discuss that in what we call the water cooler with other students. Um, but, you know, this this particular course is really about um, being assigned coursework and completing it so that we can assess your abilities. Great, thank you. And Melissa, what is included in the term repository? Sure, so a repository would be like your state archive, your state library, if you have a university archive or library near you, a local history room at your public library, um, say a uh, his county historical society or genealogical society that has a collection, uh, anyone that has a, a research collection that is sort of separate and apart and, and more material than what you would find just walking into a library and looking at shelves. So records, sets related to, you know, specific people, specific periods in history. Great, thank you. And Melissa, uh, maybe you can give sort of your elevator pitch here for this one, put you on the spot. Uh, can you comment on how your program may differ from other programs? Sure. So, um, you know, principles and certificate both are part of BU's curriculum. So, you know, we are backed by a strong university. Um, our instructors are also our, you know, top instructors, top leaders, and professional genealogists in the field. Um, I would encourage you to read their bios um, on the website. Um, and then, you know, in addition to that, the certificate program is one of the more intensive programs you can take within the genealogy field. There's really nothing else like it um, that is 15 weeks and that covers the variety of material that is covered. Um, so as I mentioned before, there are a lot of courses that dive deep into a topic, but this covers sort of the, the everything you need to know about the genealogy field and lays the foundations and gives you the essential skills you need to create all of the work products you need to create to be a professional genealogist. Great, thank you very much. Um, and now maybe we could uh, just answer some book questions aloud here, um, Amber, if you're able to. So a few people are asking if the prices are included with books or if there's promotions for books as they've seen in the past. Do you want to speak to that sort of briefly? Sure. So um, occasionally we do have a free book promotion. Um, and during that, the month that it's offered, if you would enroll in either of courses that month, you would get the books for free. Um, they're sent to you directly from the publishers closer to when the course starts. Um, and then the months where it's not a promotion for the textbooks, you will source those on your own. Um, the three books for the principals are approximately $100. The four for the certificate are approximately $200. Um, but because you're sourcing them yourselves, you may find them used, you may want an ebook, so the pricing could be different for you. Um, they're not sold at the BU bookstore, but you would be able to find them at any you know, major book source. Um, I suggest you just copy and paste the title and the ISBN number, and then it'll pop up, you know, as you're searching. Great. Thank you so much. All right. A few more questions coming in here um, as well. So let's see. Um, Here's one for you, Melissa. Do you find employment opportunities available for your graduates as is the field pretty full already? Or is the field pretty full already? Um, so most of our graduates are interested more in going off on their own um, and becoming, you know, practicing kind of entrepreneurs and genealogists. So they're not really so much looking for employment opportunities. However, the larger companies are always hiring uh, ancestry, legacy, um, you know, and then there are a lot of government positions as well. So, you know, there, I wouldn't say there are a ton of them, but there are enough that, you know, a number of our graduates do place into those um, in the end. But again, most of them are looking to work independently on their own. Thank you very much. Um, next question that just came in from Larry. In many online groups, particularly social media, the term search angel is often used as a free resource to aid in resolving cases, sometimes as the definitive go-to. 
once completed with the certificate program, what is the basic difference? Sure, so search angels are volunteers that work with a specific organization um, and there are many that have completed the BU program and that's a you know volunteer role that they want to take on. Um, <clears throat> and then you know others are you know people who are are graduates of the program that are essentially doing the same work as a search angel would do, but they are working more professionally as you know, someone who is hired by an adoptee to identify um, you know, their, their biological parent or birth parents. Um, so you know, search angels are volunteers, whereas you know, some of our BU graduates may go on to volunteer in different capacities um, for different organizations, uh, search angels being one of them, but many of them are you know, working professional genealogists and many are doing the same type of work while others are also, you know, some people don't do uh, unknown parentage cases at all. Some, some people, you know, work on, you know, 18th century, 17th century, you know, Southern research, something like that. So it, everyone's a little bit different. Thanks so much. Um, next question from Bridget. What kind of government jobs are available for genealogists? Sure. So, you know, there are sometimes shorter term jobs that are related to, you know, for example, one I saw recently was there's um, a national burial ground um, and some, they were looking for a genealogist to help identify heirs of those who were buried there. Um, I know several genealogist colleagues of mine who, mine who work for the BIA, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, um, working on you know, Native American tribal related matters. Um, and then you know, many people also do repatriation cases. So working for the Army or Navy, uh, identifying uh, relatives of individuals who are missing or killed in action um, in the event that their bodies are recovered so that there's DNA on file to compare them to. Um, so there's, there's a lot of different capacities. It really just kind of depends, um, you know, where you live, uh, whether the job can be done remotely or not, and you know what is available at the time. Great answer. Thank you so much. Um, next question from Angie. I'm just beginning my genealogy journey. Would you recommend I start my own ancestry research or wait until I enroll in the principal's course? Um, I would definitely not hesitate to to poke around a little bit and see, you know, what you can find on your own family. Um, and then, you know, the principal's course can come into play in the middle of you doing that. It's it's often a lifelong journey. It's not something you're going to complete in a couple of months. Um, so there's no harm in in dabbling in it uh, somewhat and you know joining principals when you have time and when you're ready. Right. And maybe you can offer some advice here as well uh, for Jen. She says, what happens if my case study gets very expensive? Uh, from my personal experience, getting, uh, sorry, getting records gets expensive, especially any records before 20th century in New York State. Um, yeah, so that is definitely um, something that genealogists often face. So many, in many cases, in order for you to really solve a case you do need to access records that cost money um, so you know that is something that you know maybe you put off that case and work on a different one um, a little bit later on but you know in order to resolve a case um, and meet the genealogical proof standard if there are records that you need then there are records that you need regardless of the cost so you know perhaps starting on a, a case where the records are more easily accessible to you because you live locally and can get them in person um, that may be a little bit more um, or a little bit less expensive of an option for you if you're working on a specific case study um, again it's not required for BU's program for you to do any any research um, you know, any research on your own family or spend any money on records that's not required for BU's program. But if that's a personal project, you may look to a different one first and hold off on that one until later. Great, thank you. And then kind of following up on that uh, with another question from someone else, where can we find cases to work on to gain this experience? 
Sure. So um, volunteering with your local genealogical society, perhaps helping uh, an elderly person who's interested in genealogy but doesn't have computer skills um, or doesn't have the ability to travel to a repository um, could be helpful. Um, it also can be working on your own family. So if you've done some research on your own family online and you're ready to kind of practice those skills, visiting in-person uh, repositories, you know, doing it with your own family is, you know, perfectly fine as well. Great, thank you. And question from Victoria. I've been doing genealogy for over 30 years, uh, both for myself and for others. Can I start charging for my services or should I wait uh, to finish the principal's course or certificate course um, or any other certificate courses? Um, so there's there's no um, threshold that needs to be met to charge for research. Um, you know, anyone can go out and, and charge and work as a professional genealogist. However, you know, if you're not 100% um, comfortable in your skill set and you want to learn a little more, taking principles and the certificate program would definitely be helpful. Um, the other thing too is, you know, you could do something that you are familiar with. For example, you know, pulling records at a certain facility that you've been to quite a bit um, and you're familiar with those records, but you're not taking on, you know, every case that might come your way. You're just doing record pulls and kind of learning more until you can complete the um, education that you're striving to complete. And actually, Bridget had a, a great follow-up comment here. Um, she said, you can also volunteer at your local Mormon church. Uh, most churches have a family history center at which you can uh, certainly volunteer at as well. Um, just following up on Kathleen's question. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, I know we have just uh, almost a little under 10 minutes left here in today's session. Doesn't look like there's any other questions coming in at this time, but certainly feel free to submit um, here, actually, we just had a few come in right as I said that. So um, if there's any other questions that you'd like to get answered during today's session, please submit them now and we'll uh, get those answered uh, live today. And Melissa, does the principal's class help you get started with repositories? I have only worked, um, I've only done online work, she says. Sure. So it definitely helps you to figure out where you need to go to find certain types of records and what you need to do to prepare to visit a repository in terms of planning your research, um, understanding what records might be available, um, and also understanding what those records are going to tell you. Great. Uh, Hillary says, I am new to genealogy. I am planning my first visit to the LDS library regarding my great grandfather. There are several people who might be my GGF or maybe all or one person. What can I expect? Um, so uh, definitely I would do as much work as you can before you go. So, you know, understanding what you've gathered so far, making sure those records are accessible to you or at least summarized very well in kind of a, a summary report that you have with you, kind of knowing your baseline of where you're starting. Um, and then also um, making sure that you've done your due diligence, making sure you know what records you're gonna be looking at when you get there. So looking in the catalog um, for the Family History Library, knowing you know sort of what it is that you are seeking when you get there, that'll save you some time. When you're actually there um, and you know understanding you know what it is you want to dive into i also would start creating a research log of some sort so that you can log what you've looked at um, keep track of you know what you looked at both where you found something that was of interest something that you're not sure if, if it's of interest but it might be or you found nothing at all so you want to definitely keep track of all of that so that you don't uh, repeat your research you know years later Thank you. All right. Um, from Kathleen, what kind of records do you usually find at repositories? I have an extensive family tree that I've been working on. Do you usually find more info in repositories than you can online? 
Yes, yeah, so even with the large number of records online, you know, it's estimated that anywhere from, you know, of all the records that are out there, only about 10 to 20 percent of them are online and that there's a whole lot more um, in various repositories, you know, related to your family. So, you know, you may have found online, of course, you know, census records, military draft registrations, maybe you've found reference to vital records or wills or divorces or deeds, but you haven't actually found the documents and the documents themselves often tell you more than what the indexes tell you. Um, and sometimes the index entries can be wrong. They are subject to transcription or abstracting errors. Um, so you definitely want to go in and get your hands on uh, original records. Um, you know, looking at uh, at those can be really helpful and can lead you to, you know, the next generation or additional biographical information, you know, whatever it is you're seeking. Um, I know, you know, if I were to have only done online research for my family, I would have a ton less information than what I have today. Great. Thank you, Melissa. All right. Um, it looks like, uh, David, we have a question as a, from a fellow instructor at BU um, who's been tracing their family tree since the early mid-1980s. How will this course help? Also, I'm the state records director for the Mass Genealogical Council. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so, I mean, this course will help you to understand, you know, if, if you've done a lot of research since the 80s, and I'm sure you've done a lot, I'm not sure if it's in repositories or if it's in, um, you know, in uh, just online, but, uh, you know, this course will, you know, sort of take you through a lot of what you need to know in terms of making sure your research is on the right track, making sure you're following standards within the genealogy fields. Uh, if you're interested in certification, um, it will be providing you with a lot of the baseline um, that you need to complete that certification process in the right way. Um, so generally, you know, it, a lot of people who take the course are people in your position where you have been researching for many, many years, um, and they say that, you know, the course really kind of changed the way they were thinking about their research and has changed, you know, how they are going to proceed going forward. Um, you probably also will find out about a lot of resources that you didn't previously know about um, that will kind of open up some more doors for you. All right, thank you. I know we just have two minutes left here, uh, so we'll just end on this sort of recap question for today, if we can, please. Um, can you please recap when the class times are for the genealogy principles course? Um, I'm assuming they probably mean, you know, kind of describe that asynchronous with instructor-led component. Sure, so as far as the I see the question asked about class times and months. So um, principles happens twice every semester. So at the beginning of the semester and then um, in the middle of the semester. So it would be you know, September and November in the fall. It would be January and March in the spring. And then it would be um, May and July in the summer semesters. Um, and there aren't specific class times. So you work on your own time if you work best at 2 a.m., then that's what works for you. But you do need to complete, you know, the coursework within the the weeks that you're working because you are in a course with a cohort and with graders who are grading, you know, your material at the same time as everyone else's. So there are due dates. Um, you know, there are, are parameters. It's not a course where you can, you know, not do any work for 30 days and then do a whole bunch of work for 10 days. Um, so you do need to stay within the framework of the course, but you can, you know, there's not a requirement that you need to be online or at your computer from nine to one every day or anything like that. Um, it's, you know, you can do the work. Uh, when it when it suits your schedule within that general time frame of the course. All right, great. Thank you so much. And so with that, I think we'll wrap today's questions and answers session um, as we're reaching the top of the hour. Um, certainly, please, though, reach out with your questions if you say you have one that you did not get answered today um, directly to either our enrollment team, where Amber's been answering a little on the back end here um, through the phone number provided um, or even through live chat on the website. Um, so thank you all again for spending your time with us today, and we look forward to supporting your success in the near future and hope you consider joining our upcoming fall session just to continue on your genealogy journey and hone your research skills with us. 
I hope everyone stays well and have a pleasant afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.